So how is everyone today? Good, I hope. Okay. So last time, last time we were solving inequalities. We had we had just been talking about the truth-preserving operations on inequalities, and they are slightly more complicated than the truth-preserving operations for equations. Because in particular, given an equation, you can multiply both sides by negative 5, and that's always fine. But if I give you an inequality, and you multiply both sides by negative 5, what must also occur? You must switch the direction of the inequality. So this, this somewhat complicates the the machinery. So <clears throat> let's have an example. So I'm going to write an example and I'm going to solve it incorrectly. So if you're gonna if you're gonna write this down then you need to also write down that I'm doing something incorrect. So suppose I give you the, the instruction please solve the equation. Uh, solve the equation 2x minus 1 over x minus 8 <coughs> is equal to 1. And just because I want to illustrate a, a certain point, I'm just going to ignore domain issues. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore them. So supposing we're ignoring the domain-related issues, uh, what should we do? Multiply by x minus 8. OK. So we'll take this equation, 2x minus 1 over x minus 8, uh, x minus 8. <laughs> 8, x minus 8. Equal 1. And then multiply both sides by x minus 8. Okay, so why, why do that? Okay, so the new right-hand side would be x minus 8. What would the new left-hand side be? Good. Okay, so now I'll subtract x from both sides and obtain that x minus 1 is negative 8. And then I'll add 1 to both sides and obtain that x is negative 7. So it's just a quick check in the air. So 2 times negative 7, that's negative 14. Minus 1 is negative 15 in the numerator. And in the denominator, negative 7 minus 8, that's negative 15. So that'd be negative 15 over negative 15. Okay. So now I'm going to ask you a different question. So what should we do? Okay. So I, I take that as a vote for let's do exactly what we did in the left column. So that would be 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to x minus 8. So that x minus 1 is less or equal to negative, uh, is less or equal to negative 8. So that x is less or equal to negative 7. The right column is utterly incorrect. It is absolutely false. So, <clears throat> so let's, let's check that. So what we're saying is that, is that our conclusion is that x is less than negative 7. Anything less than or equal to negative 7 should work. So can someone give me a number less than negative 7? OK. Let's try x is negative 10, because, because that's in here. OK, so then 2 times negative 10 minus 1 divided by negative 10 
minus 8, less or equal to 1. So what's the numerator? Negative 21. What's the denominator? Negative 18. And so now 21, the, the negatives cancel, okay? And then this is 3 times 7, and that's 3 times 6. So this is 7 over 6. So is this an inequality? Yes. Is it true? No. No. Right? This one is bigger than 1. Yeah, this is 1 point something, or something bigger than 0. So then... <clears throat> So this is false. What went wrong? You when you're multiplying both sides by x minus 8, you don't know if x minus 8 is positive or negative, and so you don't know whether to switch the sign or not, so you can't do it. This is exactly the problem. So consider. Where did we check? We checked at negative 10, right? So if x was negative 10, this would be negative 18. That would, that would mean that we would multiply both sides by negative 18. And what would we have to do? Flip the direction of the inequality. Huh. But what if we checked it, say, at x is, uh, at x is positive 10? Then what would this be? That'd be 2. So we'd be multiplying both sides by 2, and we should not flip the direction of the inequality. So this, this step right here is simply not permissible. You can't do it. Okay, so then we need a whole different style and, and technique to, to solve this question. So what I want you to see is that though they look similar, and in some ways are similar, the way that you come to the solution is qualitatively different. Yes? Can we do that if the problem says that x is positive or if it says that x is negative? Well, so, okay, let me, let me answer your question in this way. Here's a, here's a different question. So if we wanted to do the same thing, an, the analogous thing, what would we do? Multiply by x squared plus 1. Multiply by x squared plus 1. Is that legitimate? Can you do that? Yeah. You can. Why can you? Because the negative squared will become positive. Right. Consider the expression x squared plus 1. Well, what's the smallest that x squared could ever be? Zero. zero. It can't get any smaller than zero. Because if x was positive, its square would be positive. If x was negative, its square would be positive. If x was zero, its square would be zero. So this term right here is at least zero. And then you add one to it, it's at least one. So if you multiply both sides by x squared plus one, that's fine. That's just fine. So I answered your question with a question, I guess. Other questions? <clears throat> OK. So <clears throat> the way that you manage um, solving an inequality like that is with something called a sign chart. And it is, I sus suspect, probably the most involved math thing you have done so far. It, it is certainly the most involved thing that we've done in this class. So let's solve uh, that, that inequality, 2x minus 1 over x minus 8, less or equal to 1. So we want to solve this. OK, the first step. Now that we're really doing a solution, we're not going to omit anything. So what's the first step? Natural domain. Natural domain. 
So, what is the natural domain of this inequality? So how about it? Anything but eight. So why don't, do we have something against eights, or what's, what's the reason for that? It makes the denominator zero. Right. This expression cannot be evaluated at eight. It could be evaluated at, it, it can be evaluated at negative ten. There's nothing wrong with that. You could, you could plug in negative ten. But we did that on the previous page, and when you plug in negative ten, you get this. So what does that mean about negative ten? It's not part of the solution. It is part of the domain. So, so these two words in your former math experience, probably the distinction was, a sharp distinction was not drawn between them, but we will draw a sharp distinction between them. Anything but eight can be plugged into this inequality. Anything at all but eight. But we want to find just those things that you plug in and the inequality is true. That's what it means to solve. Okay, so now, uh, now we're going to zero and simplify the inequality. So there's two steps here, there's two things going on. So by zero, by that instruction, I mean I want you to make one side zero. So how could we do that? Subtract one, that'd be fine. Okay, so 2x minus 1 divided by x minus 8 <coughs> minus 1 less or equal to 0. Okay, so now one of the sides is 0. So now by, by simplify, I mean, get it as a single fraction and factor it completely. Okay, so then now, this is not a single fraction because it's a fraction minus something. So I want it to be just a single fraction. So how can we get, how can we arrange that? Right. So 2x minus 1 over x minus 8. And I'm going to do it just slightly differently than what you said. So you said write it as x minus 8 over x minus 8. That'd be just fine. But I want to remind you that when you want to subtract fractions, you can do the cross multiply thingy, the butterfly thingy, maybe your instructor called it. Right? Where it's, it'd be this one times this one minus that one times that one divided by that one times that one. So that's what I'll do. So 2x minus 1 times 1 minus <coughs> 1 times x minus 8. And then divide by x minus 8 times 1, less or equal to 0. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify the numerator as much as I can. So that would be 2x minus 1, and then minus x, and then plus 8 over x minus 8. That's equal to 0. And then what does the numerator, numerator simplify to? x plus 7. OK. So this is where we were trying to get. So this is zeroed and simplified. Any question about getting to this position? So now I haven't explained at all why we want to do this. I'm going to get to that. But supposing that there's a good reason, are there any questions how we got here? Yes? Why did you 
Because I did the cross multiplication thing. So it's this one times that one, and then minus that one times that one. And then the denominator is the product of the denominators. Okay. Other questions? OK. So now, now what we're going to do in step three is we're going to solve an equation. So we're going to take this zero, zeroed and simplified inequality and we're going to turn it into equality. So x plus 7 over x minus 8, x minus 8. And instead of writing less or equal to 0, I'm going to write equals 0. Okay, so now we want to solve this. Okay. So how do we solve this? Okay, well, what, and what's your reason for that? Because if the numerator equals zero, then the fraction equals zero, and that's what you're trying to find. Okay, I like that. But the only problem with that is, is that what if the numerator and the denominator are both zero? Well, then it's not in the natural domain. Ah, uh, then it wouldn't be in the natural domain. Good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that really explicit by writing it like this. So most students will will omit this step when, when you get comfortable enough with it, and that's fine. So now I'm doing this. So now, do we need to worry about the equation switching direction? No, that doesn't even make sense, right? Equations don't have a direction. Okay. For an equation, can you, can you always multiply an equation both sides by a number? A non-zero number. But now I'm, I'm worried. What if x was 8? Because if x was 8, then that'd be 0. Then it's not the natural domain. But that's why we talked about this in the first place, because we already said that 8 is out. We've already said that we're not talking about x is 8. So does everyone see that this red thing that we did here, this is in fact legitimate. It is a number that is not 0. Just because eight's not in the natural domain. Okay, so then the new left-hand side is x plus seven, and the new right-hand side is zero. So what's the solution to this equation? Very good. Okay, so now, the whole exercise to this point was to collect these pieces. This piece, this piece, and that piece. So this, this piece, these are breaks in the natural domain. This piece, these are solutions to the equation. And this piece down here, this is the zeroed and simplified inequality. So the whole, the whole point of the exercise was to collect these three pieces. Okay. Now we're going to use these pieces to make a sign chart. So specifically, I'm going to draw a number line. And then on the number line, on the number line, we're going to plot these things. We want to plot all the breaks in the natural domain, and we want to plot all the solutions. So there was one break in the natural domain, and there was one solution. So we've got two things to plot. So I'm a, here's one of them, and here's another one. OK, and I'm going to write something, and I want you to tell me about what I've written. OK, so we found a break in the domain. Eight, and we found a solution 
Negative seven. Well, I mean, first we found a break in the domain, so I plotted it first. And then, and then we've, okay, good. So does everyone see this? I know it's a little silly for, it may seem silly for me to do this, but the truth is, is that when you're taking a quiz and you're in a somewhat psychologically pressured environment, that's the kind of error that you can make. Okay, now, these two, these two things that we plotted, they're, they're of different categories. Right? So this one, this is a break in the domain. And this one is a solution. And, it, and in particular, it is in the domain. So I'm going to signify that that's the case. For the break in the domain, I'm going to put a big open circle so that, I, so that I don't become confused and think that's part of the domain. And I'm going to put a closed circle on this one because it is part of the domain. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so the meaning of this, because this is a break that's open, and because this is a solution, that one's closed. So now, we've taken the number line and we carved it into three regions. One, two, three carved it into three regions. For each region now, we want to select a point in the region. So what's a point to the left of negative 7? Negative 10. What's a point between negative 7 and 8? 0. And what is a point to the right of 8? 10. Now there's nothing sacred about negative 10, 0, and 10. In this rightmost region, we could have selected 10 million. That would have been fine because 10 million is in there. Okay. So now, what we're going to do with these is we're going to take all of these pieces, take all of these, this, this one, this one, this one, and we're going to evaluate those test points into the left-hand side of the zeroed and simplified equation, inequality, so we're gonna, in each one of those places. So if you were to plug in negative 10 into this, well, this is a fraction. What would be the SIGN of the numerator of this fraction, of this fraction at negative 10? It'd be negative, because if you plug negative 10 in there, that'd be negative 10 plus 7. That'd be negative 3. So it would be negative, OK, in the numerator. And in the denominator, what if you plugged in negative 10? be negative. So in that region, we'll have something negative divided by something negative. Right, we'll get to that in a second. So now we're going to do the middle region. So this, this left-hand side, if you plug in 0 in the numerator, what do you get? Something positive. And if you plug in 0 in the denominator, something negative. Okay. And now if you plug in 10 in the numerator, positive. And if you plug in 10 in the denominator, positive. Is there any question where these negatives and positives came from? Okay. Now in each region, we have found the SIGN of each factor. So now in this left region, the sign pattern is negative over negative. So what's the overall sign? positive, because the ratio of two negatives is positive. Okay, how about in the middle region? Negative. negative. And how about in the right region? Positive. positive. <coughs> Any question about determining the overall signs? Okay, now I have a question. Why do you suppose why do you suppose this is called a sign chart? Because <laughs> it's a chart full of signs. Right. So, and that's just how mathematicians name things, sign chart. Okay. 
So, any question about the construction of the chart? Okay, now, using this chart we can make our conclusion. So what this chart has done is it's taken the entire natural domain, cut it into regions, three regions in this example, and labeled each one of those regions as being positive or negative. Every single region has been labeled. So the answer to the question is we either want all of the negative ones or we want all of the positive ones. So what, is it, what do we want? Do we want all the negative ones or all the positive ones? All the negative ones, because it's less than or equal to zero. Right. So then we want the negative regions. And it's not because we're negative people or something like that. It's because... Keep it for yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will. It's so my mistake. <laughs> it's because this... This says we want this thing to be less or equal to zero. Okay? Now, I could have, if I go back, if I was to go back and edit the exercise and change this to be greater or equal instead of less or equal, it's presently less or equal. But if I was to change it to greater or equal, then all of these would change, even down to this one, and we wouldn't want the negative regions. We'd want the positive ones. Okay? So any question about about why we want the negative ones instead of the positive ones. So then, what's the answer then? Okay. Why bracket? Okay, good. It's included. Okay, because we got something against eights. Right, because it's a break. -in. Very good. It couldn't, it couldn't possibly be part of the solution because it was never in the domain of consideration in the first place. Yeah, sorry, eight. <laughs> okay. Any question about this? So now, would someone please remind me, what, what was the problem in the end when we were trying to do it like this? Yeah, we, we lost, we were multiplying both sides of an inequality by something and we lost track of whether or not it was positive or negative. Now I have a question. In the sign chart method that we just did, how many times did we multiply both sides of the inequality by something? Less than one. <laughs> Zero times. We had to do a negative seven though. Where, where did we where did we do both sides? We never did both sides. So what we did is we said, I'm going to move everything to the left side. And then after that, we only worked on the left side and utterly ignored what was happening on the right at all. We did not do any operations on both sides of this inequality at the same time, of the inequality. We did it for the equation. We, we, we did do a both sides operation for the equation, but it's okay to do that. We never operated on both sides of the inequality at the same time, and therefore it is impossible that we made that error. You cannot have made it. Good. Any question about this? It would, it would, you'd feel better about that? Okay. Closure. <clears throat> Other, other questions. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so how about this one? Find the natural domain of, <clears throat> of um, let's think about this for just a second. Okay, square root of, and then over here I'm, I'm writing something hidden that you can't see. <laughs> so some people are, are saying, no, in fact I can't see that. 
Okay. <clears throat> this is something that I would write in my office and not put on the quiz. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, that's not even right, is it? <laughs> need, I need to take a nap. <laughs> okay. Uh, that'd be three. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, find the natural domain of this expression. Find the natural domain. Okay. <clears throat> so, by natural domain, I mean I want the set of all real numbers that you can plug in. So could you plug in, would it be permissible to plug in zero? Yeah. yeah, because that would be zero, that would be zero, that would be zero, and the square root of zero, is that defined? Zero. Yeah, it, it is defined and it is zero. Okay, could we plug in one? Yeah. yeah. Opposite of yes? No. <laughs> no, why can we not plug in one? Right, it'd be one okay. plus three is four and then minus 18 is something negative. So we can't plug in 1. Could we plug in negative 1? No. Opposite of no? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, because that would make it positive 18. Right, because this would be negative 1, and then plus 3 would be 2, and then plus 18 more, that'd be 20. OK? So what I want is I want you to tell me all of the numbers that you could conceivably plug in. And, and get a real number as a result. Okay? So, what must be true? So, we've got a radical and we've got a cubic being put into the, to the radical. So we've got a thing being put into the other thing. What's the math jargon for that? Argument. argument. What must be true about the argument to the radical? It needs to be non-negative. So, in the end, to answer the question, we need to solve for a non-negative argument non negative has another n argument so what we need to solve is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 18x is greater or equal to 0 so all that this question was it was just sort of a roundabout way for me to say I want you to solve this inequality. Okay? We need to know when the thing that we're plugging in is going to be greater or equal to zero. If only we had some kind of way to chart our way through this problem. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to make a sign chart, right? Okay, so what is the first step in the sign chart method? Natural domain. Natural. So now, there's a there's a potential for confusion here. We're in the sign chart method. We're trying to find the natural domain of what? The natural domain of what now? The inequality. But the reason why there's the reason why there's a potential for confusion is because the question, the the originating question is to find the natural domain of this, right? <laughs> so then, to find the natural domain of this, we need to solve this inequality, and to solve this inequality, we first need to find the natural domain of the inequality. <laughs> okay, so try and keep track of it all. There's lots of moving parts. So what is the natural domain of the inequality? How about it? Not that. So if you if you were to plug in three into this and do the arithmetic arithmetic carefully, the left hand side would be zero. The right hand side would be zero. 
and that, that's fine. So could you, let me ask it like this. Could you plug in, say, one? Is, that, is it fine to plug in one? Yes, it's just incorrect. It's not that it's incorrect. It's that, it's that the inequality is false. I suppose that's what you meant. So can you plug in one? Sure you can. You can plug in all reals. You can plug in any, any x at all. There's nothing that could possibly go wrong. Yeah. Correct. So there's two things at play here. There's the natural domain. That's the set of all x's which are in consideration. And then there's the solution, which is those x's in the natural domain where the inequality is true. Okay, all of the other x's in the natural domain that aren't part of the solution are where the inequality is false. So there's two things, the natural domain, all the permissible x's, and then there's the solution those permissible x's where the inequality is true. So, all x. What's the second step in the sign chart method? Zero and simplify. So one of those is pretty easy. Which one? The zero one. Right. How do we establish that all x's are okay? Because it, so the left hand, the right hand side is zero. Uh -huh. So for what x's is zero equal to zero? All of them, right? <laughs> zero doesn't care about x. Okay, and then the left hand side, for what x's can you plug in and evaluate? Any. You could plug in any x. So this is this is in contrast to this example. What what? X's could you simply not plug in to this one? You can't plug in 8 because division by 0 is not defined. So 8 is not part of the natural domain. Now, for this inequality, could you plug in negative 10? Yes, you could. You could plug in negative 10. And it so happens that if you plug in negative 10, the inequality is false. So, it's, so negative 10 is part of the domain, but not part of the solution. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so, zero and simplify. So one of the sides is already zero, so that's nice. So now how do we simplify this? Okay, there's a common x. So if I factor out that common x, then it would be x squared plus 3x minus 18. Can I do any better than that? It factors? Amazing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Obviously, right? <laughs> I don't see that. <laughs> what are you pointing at? What are you pointing at? Okay, so any question about this? Okay, what's the next step? Yeah, now we solve this corresponding equation. <clears throat> so x multiplied by x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 6 equals 0 now. So what are the solutions? Very good. Now what? Yeah, now you make the chart. So I'll plot the number line. What uh, fence posts do I need to plot? Right, there's three of them. So the leftmost one is negative six. The one in the middle is uh, zero, and the one over here is three. Okay. <clears throat> now what? Almost. So which one of these? Which of these are not in the domain, and which are are in the domain? They're all. 
They're all in the domain. So I'm going to denote that for myself. Okay, now now's where you start doing the pick a point thing. So something to the left of negative 6, negative 10. Between negative 6 and 0, negative 1. Okay, between 0 and 3, okay, and to the right of 3, 5. Okay. So now what are we supposed to do with these? Plug them into the thing. Plug them into the, the left-hand side, or the non-zero side of the zero and simplified inequality. OK. So if we were to plug in negative 10, now there's three factors. Uh, how about this factor? That'd be negative. Factor in the middle? Negative. This factor? Negative. So the pattern in the leftmost region is negative, negative, negative. Any question about that? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to do the rest of them quickly, because I think you understand what this is asking now. So this would be uh, negative, and then negative, and then positive, and then positive, negative, positive, and then positive, positive, positive. Okay, so that's the pattern in each region. Now we're going to figure out the overall SIGN in each region. So this would be negative, and then positive, and then negative, and then positive. And here I want to point out that, yes, they are alternating. And they were alternating on the previous example. They will not always be alternating. I can make an, you give me any sequence of the words negative and positive, and I can construct an exercise for you where the sign chart has that. Negative, and then positive, and then four negatives, and then 38 positives. No problem. Okay? It'll never be that complicated. Okay, so then, now that we have done this, we can make a conclusion. So did we want all of the positive regions or all the negative regions or what? Because we're feeling so positively excited about sign charts or, or what? Right, because of this. We want the positive regions. So the reason why we want the positive regions is because it says greater or equal to zero. Okay, now, <clears throat> so were there any positive regions? Yes. Yeah. Right, this one and that one. So what's the answer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, right? And then a bracket on infinity. Okay, good. Okay, and then box it. <laughs> okay, any question about this? Okay, now I have an I have an admission to make to you. So this is this is a this is the way you answer this question. It's it's entirely analytic, meaning that it's just. You're essentially following a recipe. This is, this is not at all the way in which I think about this exercise. Not at all. Okay? So then the way, that, the way that it actually happens in my head is like this. So on Monday, we're going to start talking about the way these things look when you plot them, the way they look. So in particular, what's under the radical, what's under the radical, can you all see that? It's kind of... There, that's better. Uh, what's under the radical is a, is a degree 3 polynomial. And the name of the shape of the plot of a degree 3 polynomial is called a cubic. And they all have a certain canonical shape. And I know what this one looks like. And by, you will also eventually know what it looks like. That polynomial looks like this. So it looks like this. Now, the, the graphite and the red, they're touching three times. Where are they touching? Yes, they are touching at negative 6, 
0, and 3. That's where they're touching. Now, <clears throat> visually, you can tell the SIGN of the expression by just looking at the red. Because being below, being below is equivalent to negative. So in this region, is it negative or positive? It's negative. So this is negative, uh, negative, because this is below. How about this one? Positive. And why is that? Because it's above. How about the next one? Negative because it's below. And the next one? Positive. Do you observe that that's exactly the conclusion we came to here? Yes. And if you'll forgive the abuse of notation here, in my mind, in my mind's eye when I was imagining this problem, because I made it up, I mean, you saw me making it up. This is what was in my mind's eye. That's a radical. When can you do this? You can do it here and here. You cannot do it over here. You cannot do it right here. Do you observe that that's exactly what this is saying? <clears throat> Good. So for those of you who like this, don't worry, we're going to do this. But you should also know, you should also know that my experience tells me about people's preferences. It's about 50-50 among, among the population of preference. Students liking the analytic method versus the geometric method. We're going to test both of them. Okay. We're going to learn both of them. All right, have a nice uh, weekend.